Maddie is a writer who decided to isolate herself from the world in a small house in the middle of the forest after she lost her hearing. Living in her own world of silence, she writes her books in the company of just her cat. But one day, her peace is threatened by a psychopath, who takes advantage of her condition to put her in a real nightmare. Being far away from anyone who could help her, and without being able to count on hearing, the protagonist enters a frantic struggle for survival. Can Maddie survive? Or will the killer be able to take advantage of her lack of hearing to get what he wants? Check out now the recap of Hush. The Beginning The film begins by introducing us to a small house in the middle of the woods, and the main character, Maddie, is inside preparing a meal. While she's reading some instructions about the recipe she is trying out, she reads her messages on the computer. A neighbor asks if she can visit her, and after accepting the invitation, she takes the opportunity to go feed her cat. The protagonist's friend is seen approaching the house, and when the two greet each other, we can see that Maddie is deaf and communicates using American Sign Language. Her neighbor, Sarah, talks to her using signs and the protagonist says that she can speak normally if she wants to, as she can read her lips. Her friend insists on using sign language, saying that she needs to practice, as she has been studying the language recently. Sarah says that she finished reading one of the books written by the protagonist, and that she loved the story, being quite surprised with the ending. Maddie says that she likes to plan several different endings for her stories, and that she always thinks very carefully before choosing which one she's going to go with. As the two talk, Sarah alerts Maddie that the fire alarm is going off. The two run into the house, and after turning off the alarm, Maddie removes the food from the oven. When asked by her friend why the alarm is so loud, the protagonist explains that this way she can perceive the vibrations of the alarm. Otherwise, she would have no way of knowing when it is ringing. The two continue their conversation outside and Sarah shows concern for her friend. Maddie, however, assures her that she can handle herself despite her difficulties. The girl invites the protagonist to her house for dinner, since her cooking didn't work out, but Maddie rejects the invitation, saying she needs to work. Sarah leaves, and shortly after saying goodbye to her friend, Maddie receives a message from her ex-boyfriend, Craig, but immediately deletes it. A little later that day, the protagonist is sitting on the couch, eating and working on a new book. She seems to be having trouble choosing the ending of the story, and decides to take a break. Tired, she makes a video call to Craig, but hangs up before he can answer. The Invasion Craig tries to call her back, but the girl rejects his calls and goes clean the dishes in the kitchen instead. Meanwhile, Sarah desperately knocks on the door, calling for help. Suddenly, she is hit by an arrow, and the masked man finishes killing her in front of the protagonist's door, who doesn't notice anything. The killer watches the girl through the glass, and knocks on the door to see if she could hear. When he realizes that the woman was deaf, the man drags Sarah's body away from there. Maddie continues to reject Craig's calls, and goes back to writing. The killer enters the protagonist's house, and slowly approaches her. At that moment, Maddie receives a call from her sister, and the man quickly turns away from the camera to avoid being noticed. Maddie and her sister chat for a while, and the killer takes the opportunity to grab the woman's cell phone from the countertop. Her sister notices a strange movement on the camera, but Maddie says it was probably just the cat. The two hang up the call, and Maddie tries to call her cat by making noise with the food bowl, but he doesn't show up. The protagonist searches the entire house but cannot find her pet. The beginning of terror. Maddie gives up on finding her cat and sits down to write again. But just as she begins, she receives a message from her own cell phone. When she opens the chat, she comes across several pictures of herself walking around the house, and one of the images shows the girl exactly where she is now. She gets up and tries to understand what is going on. She walks to the door slowly, and is faced with the murderer outside. Maddie rushes to close the door, and manages to lock it before the man enters. As the killer attempts to enter the residence once again, the protagonist calls 911. But before the call could connect, the intruder shuts off the house's power supply, leaving it completely in the dark. 
Maddie tries to connect to Sarah's Wi-Fi network, but can't because she doesn't know the password. The man walks away for a while, and when Maddie goes to the door, she realizes that he is slashing the tires of her car. She writes a message on the door, and illuminates the letters using a flashlight. The message says that she won't tell anyone anything, that she hasn't seen his face, and that her boyfriend should be arriving soon. The assassin takes off his mask, and asks her if she can read his lips. When she realizes she can, he tells her that he knows she lives alone, and that no one will come to save her. He threatens the protagonist, saying that he can enter the house as soon as he wants. The killer leaves, and Maddie goes to the kitchen to get anything that might be useful to protect herself. She arms herself with a knife and a hammer, and creates some sort of barrier on her bedroom door. Once there, she shuts all the curtains and curls up in a corner. Suddenly, she realizes that someone is knocking on the window, and as she gets up to look, she sees Sarah's body. Maddie decides to fight. While crying over her friend's death, Maddie remembers that Sarah put her cell phone in her pocket before leaving her house. Scared, but not in the mood to give herself up to the killer, Maddie comes up with a plan. The girl tries to set off the car alarm, but realizes that she would need to open the window to do so. To fool the intruder, she quickly opens the door to get the alarm activated, drawing the killer's attention to the car. Maddie runs to the bedroom window and looks for the cell phone in her friend's pocket. But before she could do so, the man came back to the window. Startled, she slams the window and ends up trapping the killer's fingers. Without a second thought, she takes the knife and stabs the man, knocking him away from the window. The killer realizes that Maddie was looking for Sarah's cell phone and leaves the device on top of the girl's body. For some time, Maddie continues to hide from the killer's line of sight, and at one point she realizes that he is spying through the front door. Hiding beside the door, she does everything she can to avoid being noticed. Sensing an opportunity, the protagonist leaves the house, hiding whenever she sees the man. Under the balcony, she follows the killer's steps, trying not to be noticed. Thinking he was long gone, Maddie tries to run, but the man begins shooting arrows in her direction. Luckily for her, the killer misses all the arrows, but she is forced to run back to the house for cover. Maddie locks the entire house and runs to the second floor. From there, she sees that the man is standing at the front door, trying to escape again. She goes out the second floor window and makes sure to walk quietly on the roof. The protagonist uses a bright signal to draw the killer's attention to the middle of the forest, and at first the idea seems to have worked. The man goes towards the signal, and Maddie starts to climb down from the roof. But during the descent, she is hit by an arrow. The assassin runs towards her, but the girl reacts and manages to steal his crossbow. The problem now is that she doesn't know how to load the gun. She enters the house again, and scares the criminal away by pointing the crossbow in his direction. Help comes. Maddie locks herself in the bathroom to tend to her injuries, and makes a bandage using alcohol and some pieces of cloth. She tries to learn how to use the crossbow, and in the meantime realizes that the killer is watching from the bathroom window. Suddenly, the scene cuts to the front door of the house and we can see that another man is knocking on the door. It is Sarah's boyfriend, John, who is looking for the girl. He reads the message written on the door and picks up his cell phone to call the emergency. But before he does, the killer shows up pretending to be a policeman and tells John to hang up the phone. The killer asks for John's identity and asks if he lives next door. John answers positively, and the criminal makes up a story, saying that he had been called on the spot and found the house in that state. He insists on the lie, saying that someone ran out of the house and stole his gun and radio, and that he needs to call the sheriff. John lends the man his phone, and he pretends to be talking to his police colleagues, but he does not return the phone at the end of the call, keeping the device in his pocket. Sarah's boyfriend asks for his cell phone back, and when the killer gives him the device back, he ends up dropping the girl's earrings. John recognizes them, and starts asking several questions, trying to uncover the lie. Convinced that the man was not a cop, John tries to distract him by telling him that Maddie had a key hidden outside the house. The criminal is interested in the key, and doesn't seem to suspect that John had already figured out what was going on. Sensing an opportunity, he grabs a rock and tries to approach the killer slowly. 
But just as he was thinking of attacking him, he is distracted by Maddie knocking on the door from the inside. At that very moment, the criminal takes the opportunity to stab him in the neck. The two get into a confrontation, and even though John is badly injured, he tries to take the criminal down. He tells Maddie to run away, but the girl doesn't seem to know what to do. The next scene shows Maddie running out the front door, but soon after she is caught up with the killer, who hits her over the head with a rock, fallen to the ground. She is completely vulnerable, and the killer manages to kill her. But we soon realize that it's all just the girl's imagination, who is still trying to think of what she can do to protect herself. Meanwhile, John dies while trying to choke out the criminal, and Maddie continues to imagine every possible way out of her situation. Maddie confronts the killer. Maddie thinks of all the places she could hide, and all the plans she could put in place to try and save herself, as if she were thinking of an ending to one of her books, but she soon realizes she doesn't have much time. After all, the protagonist was seriously injured, and she needed to act quickly to save herself. If she took too long to make a decision, she would probably bleed out, since the injury was getting worse by the second. She talks to her own conscience, and realizes that her only way out would be to kill the man who was breaking into her home. Meanwhile, outside, the man lights a cigarette while planning his next steps. He realizes that Maddie's cat is coming home, and when he tries to kill the animal, he is hit by an arrow. Maddie stands outside the house, pointing the crossbow at the assassin, but sprints back into the house when the man comes toward her. The protagonist locks the door once more, but breaks her hand in the process. The killer says he's going to get into the house anyway, and Maddie confronts the man by writing another message on the glass, in her own blood. Do it, coward. Thinking she was going to die, the girl leaves a message for her family on the computer, at the same time writing down the killer's characteristics, hoping to help the police find him in case she doesn't make it. Tired and badly injured, she begins to lose consciousness, and doesn't realize it when the killer appears behind her, coming in through the window. But before he could attack her, she feels the man's breath on her back, and uses a knife to strike him. She runs into the kitchen, and seems to pass out for a brief moment. The man goes towards her, thinking he would finally be able to kill her, but the protagonist wakes up and defends herself using an insecticide spray. She activates the fire alarm, making a loud noise and leaving the assassin stunned. The two fight on the kitchen floor, and the man comes very close to killing the woman. But before he can do that, she grabs a wine opener and manages to finally kill the intruder. Using the rest of her energy, she grabs the cell phone from the criminal's pocket and calls 911. In the last scene, we see Maddie sitting outside her home and the police finally arriving on the scene to put an end to her nightmare. Today's video ends here, but before you go, tell us in the comments if you would have had the same courage that Maddie had in order to face the killer. If you were in her place, what would you have done to survive? Thank you so much for your company in this video, and until the next time,